John chapter 16, verse 33. They are preaching in songs. And they are preaching by the Logos, which is the word. And they said, these things I have spoken unto you. This is Jesus now. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus, he looks out for us. He loves us. The epitome of love is Jesus. The realness, if you the truth of someone loving you, it's not your husband or another person. Jesus, it never fail. Never get tired of calling his name. And he said, these things I've spoken unto you. And this is what he says, that in me, you may have peace. But he said, in the world, you shall have tribulation. But he said, be of good cheer, because I have overcome. Thank you very much. What's your definition of happiness? What is your definition of happiness? Because there's a whole lot of people are seeking for happiness. Everybody wants to be happy. Happiness have to do with what's happening. And you say, what's happening? Ain't nothing happening, so I'm not happy. And we run the whole world trying to be happy. And we hide from the truth trying to be happy. And we reject the truth. But we still want to be happy. And we don't want to follow Jesus. But we want to be happy. We don't want to listen to the preacher now. But we want to be happy. And the, one of the most dangerous things is, is when you're in the midst of the truth. And you are the worst. You're exposed to so much truth. And because you reject the truth, your life is miserable. Don't look to your left or your right. Your life is miserable. But we're like other people groping in the dark. Let me go over here because I can be happy. You're groping in the dark trying to find happiness. The misnomer. If my wife would treat me a certain way, then I'll be happy. Mm, she's the one why I'm so miserable. If my husband will fulfill all my emotional need, oh, how, child, how I would be so happy. You know, especially now I'm saved before I got saved, you know, you know, I was doing my thing, you know, and I was all happy, but now I got married. Mm. So if my husband would fulfill all my, this is the misnomer, uh, yeah, just, just fulfill all my, just feed me, and I would be so happy. If I would get a certain amount of money. For some of you, you just need a dollar and fifty cents. That's a some of you. It's a dollar and fifty cents. For some of you, you said, just give me half a million. Just give me, just give me ten thousand. And some of you, it's a million, and I'll be so happy. Y'all wouldn't even see me in church. Cause I got a whole lot on my list to take care of before I die, and I'll be so happy. If I would just move to another city, my, my. And the amazing thing is the person in the next city said, if I could just move to the city where you want to move from, I would be so happy. And everybody got this thing floating in their head, what they think happiness is. If I just, if I didn't marry to him, if I weren't married to him, I know I'll be happy. If, I'm, if I weren't married to her, I knew I'll be happy. Well, the other one said, just send him over here. And I'll sure to be happy. Send her over here and I'll sure to be so happy. I just need a man. I just need a warm body. I'll be so happy. And oh, how we believe these things. I want to ask you the question. 
You know, for some of you, say, if I just get a steady man, I'll be happy. I'm sick and tired of the male man. Mm -hmm. Another one on shift again. How are you, Mr. Mailman? What are you doing just to find happiness? That's the question I want to ask you. What are you doing just to find happiness? We do drugs to find happiness. Drugs. And what drugs does, what it does, whether you smoke it, you sniff it, or you shoot it, what it does, it frees your mind. And it takes you from reality. While the reality is you still got problems, but it sends you somewhere else. It's numb your mind. So when you, it's like when you, you ever been depressed and you went to sleep and you thought just because you went to sleep, you got up, the problem was going to be gone. Then you got up to realize that the problem is still there. That's what drug does to us. It just freezes your mind, put you in this euphoria, just this place of just smiling to yourself. I want to be so happy, man. You know the song they say, I want to be high. Hey, Rastaman, hear what I say. Give me some of that sensei. You know, the, the weed that they're smoking now, Minister Kim, you can be in your house and it's coming through your door. Imagine what it's doing to, the, to your, some of y'all brain. Not there, some of y'all brain that's sitting right here. Imagine what it's doing. You could just, you know, some ladies from afar, you can smell their perfume. And some people from afar, you could just smell that weed. Imagine what it's doing to some of y'all brain. Well, I got to do it because I want to be happy. And I drink, some people drink because they want happiness. And they have every weekend. This is, week, this is my weekend drink right here, just for my weekend, because I want to be happy. This drink, you got your favorite drink. Christian got your favorite liquor. Yeah, we're not talking about the world now. We're talking about you right here. Some of you got more liquor in your house than sinners. Might as well some of y'all just open up a bar and go get, it, get yourself a license. I just done tap into something there. Let me move on here. Because you want to be happy. And, and for those of you got liquor all around your house, you know what you're saying to your kids? If they turn up to be an alcoholic, don't blame them. Because that's all they grew up to see. I'm a Christian and I got, I got bar in my basement. And wonder why your kids going to be alcoholic. Because that's what they're growing up into. That's what you're putting before them. That's what you're showing them. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's kind of get quiet right there. Okay. That, don't listen to the preacher. It's okay. All right. It's okay. Mm -hmm. And then another thing we do, we, we keep spending. Because I want to be happy. Keep spending and spending. And we spending and we spend and we spend and we spend what you don't even have. Because you want to be happy. Some of us, we raveled. We love the energy of the crowd. We love party, raveling party. Party, we're pumping and dancing. We're doing all the moves. And <laughs> we love the raw. Hallelujah, because it's, you know, it's giving you that energy. Listen, so we sell ourselves short for happiness. For what we call happiness. I want to say something to you because you, we often do this because you know somebody who is miserable. Especially you know a single man who is miserable. You know a single woman who is miserable. And don't you tell them you need to get out of the house and go get yourself a woman and you need to get out of the house and go get yourself a man with your miserable self. Don't, if they're miserable, you don't want to tell them to go marry somebody because they're miserable. Maybe 
that's why so many couples are miserable now because they've been miserable before. So they think if I just go get a man, I'll be happy. If I just go get a woman, I'll be happy. But your life did not change. You enter the relationship on the false perception. If I, I, oh, you'll be happy for a minute. You'll be happy for a few days or months. But when reality hits you, so you don't, you either get out the house and get a man. What, with your miserable self? Let me share this with you. If you're not happy with God, listen to me. If you're not happy with God, you will not be happy with yourself. And the reason why some of you are not happy, because number one, God is not driving in your life. God is not in control of your life. Things and everything around you are in control of your life. And if you're not happy with God, you're not happy with yourself. And if you're not happy with yourself, you're not happy with no one else. So we have the church. I want, I want her to treat me right. And I, and I want him to treat me right. And I want her to be happy as a single. But then God is over here saying, here, I am your hookup. But no, 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 we, we ain't ready for you yet. No, no, we ain't ready for you yet. <laughs> Let me try to do it myself. Let me try to, and then you take your miserable self over there. You take your miserable self over here. And you take your miserable self uptown. And you take your miserable self downtown. And you take your miserable self in the east. You take your miserable self in the west. You take your miserable self in the north. You take your miserable self in the south. And God say, here, I'm your hookup. 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 But no, 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 I don't need you now. That don't look like happiness. I'm not. The Bible said wisdom cried, but they don't hear it. Y'all need to hear me. Y'all need to hear me here. We often reject the thing that can make it work. So if you're not happy with God, you're not happy with yourself, you will not be happy with anyone else. We often put people in the place where we need to put God. We put people and things in the place of our life where that don't belong there. You need to put God there. Don't you see that it's even church? church, It seems like even in church, God has been squeezed out of the church itself. It's like you go to church. You give your little whatever you give, then you leave and your life is your home. That's, what, that's what's going on now in society. Let me just go to church and give my half hour, especially the larger church. I give my half hour, boom, 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 maybe 45 minutes if you go too long. Why? Because I got to go play golf. I got to go. I got, I got a second job I got to get. I got to make the money. It's all about pride of life. I got to go make the money. And then, and, and then you're, you're almost like a drunk. Drunk. And you're not happy and you're grabbing for everything. Trying to be happy. And then we somehow, something haven't snapped in our head. Let me tell you a story about two young ladies, two sisters. I'm going to hurry up. Rachel and Leah. This is Genesis chapter 29. Maybe next week if the Lord permit me, I'll come back and teach Clara. Genesis chapter 29. Jacob, amen, uh, saw uh, two sisters at the well, and, and man kind of loved the pretty one, so he goes after the pretty one. And then, he, you know, he, he helped them out at the well while he was working with them. Uh, some guy was trying to mess with them, and he fought off these guys. And, he, and when he, the daddy get to meet the daddy, the daddy was laboring, Genesis chapter 29. Then he, he said, I'll work for your daughter. And he worked seven years for her. And then when he worked seven years, now remember, he just deceived his brother now. And then now, now, now Laban deceived him because he works for seven years, and he thought that he was going to get Rachel. And then Laban slipped in Leah. Yes. Who is Leah now? The ugly one. The unattractive one. But the difference between Rachel and Leah, Rachel was pretty but her soil wasn't right. Leah was ugly but her soil was good if you get my drift. So 
Rachel was in a ugly situation. And while uh, uh, Leah was in a pretty situation. So now when he found out that he deceived him, he said, okay, I'll work another 70 years. Then he works the next seven years. Then he got finally got what he wanted. I'm going to be happy now. I got me the pretty one. Because the cockeyed one ain't right. Now this is going to relate to church folks. Because we major in looks. And I'm not saying you shouldn't look good. And I keep telling you that for those of you going to get married or get married again, you need not to get married because of looks and shape. You get married because of destiny. And let me talk to you ladies because you like to marry these unsaved men and you want the pastor to give them salvation after. You don't listen to me when you want to see that man. But when he's giving you hell fire, then you want to bring him up here for me to change him. I ain't Jesus. I ain't Jesus. <laughs> and don't want to be Jesus. Uh, my shoulder ain't that big. But, but, but the problem now what we have, let me just give you quickly the story of her, quickly. The problem that we have with these two sisters now, that we, we had now jealousy with these two sisters. Because now, Jacob was spending more time at the ugly sister's house. And the cute sister, he really stayed at her house. And she started thinking, something is wrong here. I got all the beauty but why are you over there because he wants the beauty but he wants another generation Amen. you're beautiful but you can't have no baby you're beautiful but you cannot produce nothing but her all he has to do is to look at Rachel all he has to do is to look at Leah and she get pregnant that's it just show up at the door and look at her and she's like, honey, guess what? Again. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. That's it. So why wouldn't he want to be over there? See, ladies, the man is attracted to you because of your looks. And all that dress up and all that padding and the padding that they have now to attract them. Make sure after all of that, you got something else to give him. I'm warning you. Make sure. Because Rachel's beauty alone couldn't keep him. And this is where we get to. Now, it brings a problem now because she wasn't happy. Rachel wasn't happy. But Leah also wasn't happy either. Why she wasn't happy? Because Rachel wasn't happy because she can't produce a baby. And back then, when you're barren, you're known as cursed. But then Leah within her heart, while she was being intimate with this man, she knew within herself that this man don't want me. He just want my baby. Mm. Oh, he come over here a lot, but he only come over here because I can spit this baby out. Yeah. How insecure she felt. While the pretty sister thought that she's all over there happy and he ain't spending no time with me. Yeah. And not knowing that both of them are in the same situation. Because you're beautiful but you can't produce. You're ugly, but you're giving me what I need. Mm, for those of you who uh, work in the office, man or woman, not here, let me talk to somebody else. You ever seen something about another guy that you wish you could say, 
I wish I, my husband would be more patient like you. And I, I wish I could just go take your patience and take it home to my husband so I can have two in one. But now I like your patient, but I can't have you because I'm stuck with you. Let me, let me talk to myself here. Let me just say this, and I'm, I'm going to shut this down. She keep on spitting out these babies. And how many women in reality, you got a bunch of kids. They wasn't planned, but you figure if I could just keep on having the baby, I'll win his love. I'll win her love. Because he wants baby, that's a man pride. What, this a boy again? Hallelujah, another man. But in reality, he's just doing it because he wants more baby. And then you're giving him the baby because you want to be happy. Some of you ladies, you're working hard. This is what's going on now. Y'all are not here in this church, but th these are the young buck now. They don't have to work because we have a bunch of y'all. You go to school, you get up every day, you get your education to end up with thugs. <laughs> to end up with thugs that drive your car and you pay them money to drive around to go to the next woman's house. Because guess what? After all your education and all of that, you go home miserable by yourself in your house. So now you got to pay for some form of happiness. I feel like I'm teaching here. Let me, I'm, I'm done. Let, let me just say this and I'm done. Maybe I'll come next week. This, watch this. Don't, lose, don't miss this. You can have a struggle. And not be happy. I'm going through some struggle in my life. But I'm not happy. But you can have a struggle. And you have peace. You can have a struggle. And not be happy. But you can have a struggle. And have peace. Why? Right where we start, Matthew 6, 33. Jesus says, in me, Matthew 16, 33, in me, you will have peace. We're missing it. Whatever you want. I think it's Psalms 37, 34. Delight yourself in the Lord. Make Jesus happy. Let me tell you something about a woman. Let me tell you something about a woman. You'll give her a diamond ring today. And you'll think the diamond ring's going to last. Because that's how your man think. You just give her a diamond ring now. And then it will last for the whole years. No, in two next day, she wants something else. Let me tell you something about a man. I'm going to hear you now. I'm going to hear you now. You will give him your blood today and think it's going to last and think you work hard. You did everything for him. You even lose weight for him. You did all that for him. And he said, I'll need something else. Oh, I hear y'all shout now. Y'all shout now on that one. What am I really saying? You've been trying to please the wrong person. All your life you've been trying to be a people pleaser. Why don't you be a Jesus pleaser? Why don't you be a Jesus pleaser? You've been pleasing people all your life and it's not working. Why now you don't start to please Jesus? And don't you see when you start pleasing him, you'll see things start changing. Things are not changing because you're pleasing man. And the more you give man, it's the more they want. And it's the more you give man, it's the more they lust. It's the more you give man, it's the more they say, is there anything more? But if you just give Jesus what he needs. I'm talking to these little young girls in here. I'm talking to these little young boys in here. I'm talking to you single in here. I'm talking to you marriage couple in here. If you start giving Jesus what he needs, you've been ignoring Jesus. There's some of you here, you're not happy because you're running for ministry. 
You curse even your own ministry. You curse the very same thing that was going to make you blessed, that was going to make you rich. And it become secondary. And God said, I give you this not to be secondary, but I give you this to follow me. It's not happiness we're looking for because happiness comes. Happiness goes. Take it from Jesus. Take it from Jesus. In me, you will have peace. You can have a struggle, but you can't have no happiness. But you can have a struggle and you have peace. When peace like a river attended my way. When sorrows and seas billows roll. Whatever my Lord thou have caused me to say. It is well. It is well with my soul. That's peace. It is well. It is well with my soul. With my soul. It is well. It is well with my soul. The key to know if you are saved is not happiness. It's peace with my soul. With my soul. It is well is it it is well is it with your soul that's the key it's not how happy you want to know if you're saved do you have peace in your storm do you have peace in your marriage problem do you have peace in the in your single problem do you have peace with your sickness do you have peace even though you can't find a job do you have peace even though you're going through hell and high water do you have peace because he promised you watch this my peace I leave with you I give it to you and Jesus when he gives you something he don't take it back. What? Even if he gives you the gift of tongues and you backslid and you curse him out, he won't take it back from you. Because he, I won't say he's an Indian giver. That's not true. That's, that, that was made up by man. Uh, uh, we stole the, the Indian land and we called him an Indian giver. So I won't say he, he's not an Indian giver, but he's not a man to change his mind. I want to ask you a question. Where, where, because some of you don't have peace, it drives you all over the place. Looking for happiness. I want to ask you the question, where is your peace? 